Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video, I'll be taking you through the prep work on this BA XR6 Tickford Ute, painted in blueprint, color code UU. I'm using Standox, but this video is just the prep work. So, um, about all I've actually done is just um, sped it up to two times uh, the natural speed, just to get through it a bit quicker, and you can still get the idea. I'll tell you exactly what I do at each step. So. Um, first up, I'm just starting with just a bit of water on a damp rag and then I'm drying that off. So that's just over the blend areas where there's any dirt. If you've got any uh, tar, road tar and grime and stuff like that or grease, you can then get a bit of um, Prepsol or wax and grease remover and clean them off with that. But most of the time I've found you don't need to. So um, I'm just starting off with 180 on the block after I guide coated it. So I use that dry powder guide coat. Personally, I prefer that. I find that some people, uh, they like to use the black gun um, with a bit of acrylic black in it. But I found that that, um, that clogs up the paper. It's more people used to do it when in the wet rubbing days and the sandpaper didn't block up as much as the uh, dry sandpaper does. So. Just uh, block and ride over all those repairs. Just take note of that line there. You, you've got to block up to that line and make sure it's nice and straight. You can see where that guide coat will actually show you where the lines are going to be straight. It'll also show up any highs and lows. If there's a, a spot that's um, still got the guide coat there, well then it's going to, if there's just a little circle, that's going to be a low spot and you can keep blocking that area until it's gone then you can rub your hand over it make sure there's no imperfections with a flat palm uh, make sure there's no low spots you can also wet check it if you like you can get some of that wax and grease remover you've got wipe it over the panel after you've blown it off and then you can have a look down the side and it'll give this the same effect as when it's painted so if there's any highs and lows uh, you'll be able to give them another block back or decide to put some filler in it if it's too big and then reprime so, um, unfortunately, uh, at the end of this video, for some reason, the camera stopped recording. I'm actually going to go down today and get a new camera. It's been uh, annoying me. I've been losing a little bit of footage. Um, it got to about 18 minutes on this video and then cut out. But we've still got most of it, and I'll still explain exactly what I'm doing every step. So... As I said, that's just the 180. We're then rubbing our hands over it with a flat palm to make sure there's no highs and lows that you may have missed with the block. Then we're re-guide coating it. So the guide coat this time is going to be used uh, for detection of the scratches, not so much detection of highs and lows. So we can tell once all that guide coat's gone, we've then removed all of those 180 scratches. And I've decided to use 320 grit to get rid of the 180. Um, if I was to block it down with 240, then 400 grit would probably be uh, enough to take out the 240 scratches. But being that I've used 180, I'd want to go 320 and then finish it off with 600. Um, which uh, this is actually how I get the blend ready. Which is that's about all you ended up missing out on on this was the the blend area. So most of the panel um, you still got the footage of. So all I ended up doing over on those blend areas where you can see the blue paint still there. I just had 600 grit on this orbital sander. I then just sanded over it. And then all I did was a piece of grey scotch bright around all the corners and the edges. And then I went over the whole panel with a 800 grit soft back sanding sponge just to take it from 600 to 800. Uh, some people still like to use 800 or 1000 grit and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There's less chance of cutting through. So. Just on that little back corner there, um, I just had, ended up finding a little scratch, a little chip. I decided it was a little bit too deep to want to feather out. Sometimes you can end up opening up a bigger problem. Sometimes you're just better off going up and mixing up some fine filler, which is what I'm doing now. I'm using the Worth Polyester uh, Polyester Filler Ultra Fine. It's, uh, this is one of the best on the market, I think, the Worth. Um, a lot of people like to use the U-Pole brands, but personally I'm not the biggest fan of them. I find that once you paint over them, sometimes you can get little um, spots that may fry up or lift up. So this is my favourite, the Worth brand. It's expensive, but I think it's good stuff. So just put it in just nice and tight in there so it's easier to rub out. You put too much in, it's going to take too much to rub out, and then you're going to end up rubbing through in too many areas. So. 
After I gave that five, I'm, I'm doing the edges here with a piece of 500 on the soft pad. So once, I, once I've done that, that piece of fine filler will have dried off. Obviously it's going to depend on temperature. Um, you can give it a heat gun if you're waiting on it. It only takes a couple of minutes. So I ended up then just putting a touch of 1K acrylic primer over it and then grab the heat gun just to help it dry off. And it, 1K, 1K to 1K primer only takes a couple of minutes to dry. So Make sure we go over all these edges because sometimes you can get some uh, marks from the orbital sander inside there. So I just, as I said, just sprayed one little uh, coat of acrylic primer over there, just over those rub through areas. And then I'll just give it a quick scuff back with a piece of five or 800. Basically, uh, 500 can be used where you're putting color over and 800 for blend areas. So, um, Being that we missed out on the, the blend panel, I decided to just um, in, include just a little bit of the masking as well. So you see I'm, I'm just wiping this blend area off with a just a clean rag and you can prep sole it prior to masking but I've found like even when I used to work in a prestige shop and we'd do BMWs all day every day I, I tried doing it both ways, like prep soling before masking or, or wax and grease before masking and not wax and grease before masking. I found it didn't make any difference. It, um, so I found that's all you really need to do. Just give it a good blow off and then once it's masked up, you can prep sole it. Um, so if, if it's going to be sitting around for a couple of days, yeah, you might want to give it um, a, a prep sole straight after you've prepped it up. but. Um, I, I just usually like to prep them up, bang, straight into the booth. Don't have them sitting around. Dust is going to accumulate on them and people are going to put their greasy hands on them and stuff like that. So that's something to be conscious of. Um, you don't want a prepped panel sitting around for too long because you've opened up that fresh paint. And um, yeah, I just like to go straight in the booth. I don't even usually do this ed edge masking outside, but this time I ended up, I think I was waiting on the booth. So. Um, I'll be uploading the um, the rest of this video soon, which will just be paintwork and the final steps of masking when it's when it is in the booth. So keep an eye out for that one soon. I've got a um a couple of uh, links to a couple of other priming videos and some prep work at the end here. Check them out if you haven't already seen them. Uh, I've got a link to my Facebook page down the bottom in the comments box there. Um, always uploading uh, loads of photos and. All my links to all these videos, I end up linking over there too. So give that a like if you haven't already. Um, you're more than welcome to ask any questions. I do my best to answer all questions you've got. Um, I hope I can help out um, anyone because uh, I do understand it. It is a pretty difficult trade sometimes. It might look easy, but um, yeah, anyone that's in the trade knows exactly what I'm talking about. So um, this just about brings this video to an end. Uh, we've got a quick look at the car once it's finished off. Um, as I say, there's the colour matching on this car as well. It was actually a bit of a tricky colour. Um, it wasn't it wasn't very good after I mixed it up, so it took me quite a while. Oh, it might have taken me 25 minutes to colour match, so but it took quite a few changes. So check that out too. And this is the car once it's all finished off. Looks nice. We've all given it a polish up, given it a good detail for him, made it look all nice for him. So, thanks again for watching. This has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.